What's up guys, my name's Brandon and I've been testing out iOS 14 on my iPhone 7 Plus here for the past couple of weeks and I wanted to share my experience with you guys. So of course I did cover the iPhone 6S and the iPhone SE running iOS 14 here on the channel and by popular request, here is that video on the iPhone 7 and iPhone 7 Plus. So we're gonna be talking about all the new features and changes and how they run on the iPhone 7 Plus. Specifically, we're also gonna talk about the performance, the battery life, the connectivity, and if you should update or not. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into it. First off, let's talk about the new features and changes. Now, once again, like always in these videos, I know you guys know about most of the new features and changes already, but I wanna talk about them briefly again and talk about how they run specifically on the iPhone 7 and the iPhone 7 Plus. So let's start off with the obvious, some of the headlining features in iOS 14, and that's going to be the widget. So as you can see up top, we do have the clocks widget right there where it shows four different time zones. You can also get this in a different size. So to invoke the widgets and add widgets to your home screen, you just tap and hold anywhere on the screen, or you can hold an icon as well. Then you will get the plus up in the top right, click on that, and you will see all of your widgets right here. You can search for widgets. You get some of the featured widgets right here. Then you can scroll down and you can see you have your smart stack, batteries, calendar, clock, files, podcasts, screen time, shortcuts, all of these different things that you can add to your home screen. And if you tap on one of them, you can see that you can add different sizes to your home screen as well. So say we want to add this one right here. And if you have multiple widgets that are the same size on the springboard, you can drag them over top to create your own custom stack just like so. And if you want to move one out of that custom stack, do not press the top left because that'll just delete the entire thing. Just simply go out of jiggle mode and then go back into it. Just tap and hold on this. And then you can go ahead and edit stack. And from here, you can see that you can go ahead and delete whatever one you want to delete from that stack. And I do find myself adding more widgets to the home screen of the iPhone 7 Plus as opposed to the iPhone 7. And that of course is because of the smaller screen on the iPhone 7, just takes up a little bit more room on that screen. So I find myself using more of like the smaller widgets like this music one right here on that device. But on the iPhone 7 Plus, I find myself using widgets, maybe like two or three widgets per page. And it looks nice because of the bigger display. And then if we swipe all the way over to the right, we have the app library, which shows all of our applications, which are grouped smartly. So those are grouped automatically by iOS. And if you tap the search bar right here, you can search your applications in alphabetical order. And also one of my favorite features in iOS 14 is the fact that you can remove applications from the springboard without actually deleting them. So if we want to remove application right here, we could just simply do remove from home screen and then it just will not show up on the home screen and it will only be in the app library. So you can search for it in here or you could search from it from the spotlight search or you could just simply go into one of these folders and find it in there. We also have some nice changes to the music application in iOS 14. Starting off with the icon, you can see we have a new red icon here, very similar to the look back in iOS 7. The widget also matches it right there. And if we go into music itself, you can see there are some changes here. So the artist page, the album pages look a little bit different. If we go into the now playing screen, you can see that the background actually takes the dominant color of the album artwork and it kind of moves around a little bit, has some motion back there. Looks really, really neat. Also, if we go into the queue, you'll see we have a new button there next to the shuffle and the repeat, and that is for infinite playback. So if you run out of music, like in an album, if you have that enabled, it will find other music similar to what you just listened to, and it will continue playing so that you never run out of music. Also in the library tab, you can see we have little glyph icons next to everything right here. So playlists, artists, album songs, all these things have little glyph icons next to them and the text is also black. It's just a much cleaner look in the music application all around. Even on the browse page, everything is a little bit different in here. Looks a lot better than it did in iOS 13. We also finally get picture in picture with iOS 14, and it looks excellent on the iPhone 7 Plus. So if we go to a YouTube video, of course, we do have to use Safari to go to YouTube. You can't do it through the native YouTube application. However, it does work with things like Twitch and HBO and Netflix and things like that. But if we go into full screen, then we go back to the home screen, you can see there that we have the video playing right here. We can take it to all four corners. You can even push it off the page and then bring it back on if you just wanted to listen to it and have it not you know, be intrusive and take up part of your screen. We do also have three sizes. So if you just double tap, you can see we go through three different sizes, kind of like a small, medium, and large right there. So again, this works best on bigger screens, which is why I like it on the iPhone 7 Plus more than on the iPhone 7. On the iPhone 7, I found myself just pushing it off the screen like that, just because the screen is so small. 
uh, but definitely made for those bigger screens. We also have a new section in the control center for home control. So you can see here it says include recommended controls for home accessories and scenes. So if you have things set up through HomeKit, like if you have a HomePod or you know smart bulbs and things like that, those will all show up in the control center. So I don't have this set up on this device, but you can see here on this device, I do have it set up kind of shows my home pod right there. And if I had any favorites, it would show them right there, but I just don't have a lot of home kit accessories in my house at the moment, but that will be convenient. If you do have home kit, definitely go ahead and keep that enabled. If you do have those, if not just go ahead and disable it just so you can have easy access to all your toggles, especially on the iPhone seven. If you enable this, you will notice that you won't be able to access your toggles, any of them without scrolling down, which can be kind of annoying. Now we also have a redesigned Siri UI in iOS 14. So if you go ahead and invoke Siri, you can see there Siri is just at the bottom and it doesn't take up the entire screen like it did in iOS 13. So, Hey Siri, what's the weather like right now? And you can see there, this is what the pop-up looks like. It kind of just tells you what you said right there. And then it shows what you asked for up at the top. So it's a lot cleaner here in iOS 14. We also have a new incoming call UI. So when you're getting a phone call and now does not take up the entire screen, it just appears up top as a little banner. As you can see there, that is what the new incoming call UI looks like. You can also swipe it up like so, and then it just kind of ignores the phone call. You don't hear the ringing noise anymore, and you will see a little indicator up in the status bar showing that it's still ringing until the other person hangs up the call. As you can see, it disappeared right there. So really nice, a lot less intrusive here in iOS 14. Another great new feature in iOS 14 for the iPhone 7 Plus is if we go into our camera and then go to video, we can now change the video quality straight from the camera application without having to go into settings. So you can see it's set to 4K 30 right now. If I tap that, you can see it goes to HD. Tap it again, it goes back to 4K. We can also change the frame rate there from 30 to 60 and back and forth. That is a setting that you need to have enabled in the settings though. So if you go to your settings and camera, make sure you have video format control enabled. That way you are able to do that. That was an iPhone 11 exclusive feature last year, but now it's coming to all older devices, including the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. Also, if we go into landscape mode, you will notice that the emoji and the number keys right here are swapped. So now instead of being over on the far left, the emojis is now closer to the space bar, which makes it easier to access. Also in iOS 14, we get some nice new privacy settings. So if we go into Safari, go to the two A's up in the status bar, go to privacy report, it'll show you all of the trackers. So you can see here, it says Safari prevents trackers from following you across websites. And it shows which ones Safari and iOS 14 actually blocked. So you can see 43 of them in the last 30 days, and it shows 75% of websites contact the trackers. It'll show you the websites right here and exactly what those trackers are. Also, if we go into our settings and then go back and go down to privacy, and then we have tracking right here. So it says, allow apps to request to track, allow apps to ask permission to track you across apps and websites owned by other companies. So that is grayed out right now, but that is a feature in iOS 14. Also in location services, if we go to one of these right here, let's just say camera, for example, you can see there we have precise location. So you can see there it says allows apps to use your specific location. With this setting off, apps can only determine your approximate location. So now if you don't want an application to know your exact location, then you could just turn this off and it will just use your approximate location. So obviously you want to have precise location on for things like camera and maps, but maybe you don't want that for you know third-party applications. So yeah, you get a lot of great new features with iOS 14 here on the iPhone 7 and iPhone 7 Plus. Unfortunately, we do not get the back tap feature, which is available for other devices. So in accessibility and then on touch, and then all the way down is a new feature called backtrack on a lot of newer iPhones. So even the iPhone SE 2020 gets this feature, but for some reason, the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus do not get this new feature, which kind of sucks but I guess Apple couldn't give this four-year-old device every single new iOS 14 feature. So now let's move on to some of the important things like the performance, the battery life, the connectivity, and if you should update. So starting off with the performance, performance is actually really, really good on iOS 14. So I am currently on the third public beta and it is extremely stable, which is really surprising. It's honestly kind of right on par with iOS 13.6, if not better than iOS 13.6, the latest public release on iOS 13. Now, of course, there are some bugs and app crashes that is expected with a beta release, 
but in terms of just raw performance, the iPhone 7 Plus is a beast on iOS 14. Now you may have also heard about a storage bug where iOS 14 would take up a lot of space on your device. Well, fortunately that has been fixed in iOS 14 beta three. So as you can see there, my other is not taking up a lot of space at all. As a matter of fact, it's only taking up about four gigabytes of space on my iPhone 7 Plus. So that was a major bug and a major reason that a lot of people did not want to update to iOS 14. But now that that is no longer a bug, it's been fixed. It's gonna be really hard for people to wait for iOS 14 to come out in a couple of months because it's just so stable and runs so well here in the beta stages. Now, as far as Geekbench scores, I did run a Geekbench score here and you can see I got a 772 single core and a 1397 multi-core score. So those scores are pretty decent, but Geekbench scores don't really tell you the full story. iPhone 7 Plus runs great on iOS 14, but as far as battery life goes, battery life is okay on iOS 14. I personally had battery drain on many versions of iOS 13, including iOS 13.5.1 and 13.6. Also a lot of family members and friends who have the iPhone 7 Plus reported bad battery drain on iOS 13. And iOS 14 fixes that somewhat, but the battery life is still not great. Now with the iPhone 6S, I found that the widgets actually drained the battery quite a bit, but that was not the case with the iPhone SE, and I found that not to be the case with the iPhone 7 or 7 Plus, at least I don't think so. So it appears that the battery life on the iPhone 7 Plus, specifically I use this more than the iPhone 7, I only use the iPhone 7 for about one day, so I'm mainly talking about the 7 Plus here when I talk about the battery life, but the battery didn't really drain with anything except for phone calls and with FaceTime, so I'm not sure what the reason for that is, but it actually does great with standby. So, you know, you don't drain a lot of battery being on standby, just your phone unlocked sitting on the screen or, you know, when it's locked, just sitting there and you're not on it. It doesn't really drain. So I don't think that widgets are to blame for the bad battery. It's not even bad. The battery's not bad on iOS 14, but it's not as good as I know it could be. So that may be a reason to hold off. But if you're like me and you had bad battery life experience on 13.5.1 and 13.6, you may want to just go ahead and upgrade to iOS 14 but that's gonna completely depend on your situation and just keep in mind that this is still a beta. So now should you update your iPhone 7 or iPhone 7 Plus to iOS 14? And I say yes, as long as you're okay with facing some bugs and some app crashes. So we are still on a beta. Do not forget that we are going to be on a beta until you know September or October when the final release comes out and then we won't have any of those. But as of the time of recording this, we are on beta three and you know throughout the entire beta stage, we are going to have crashes, you know, widgets may show up blank. You may drop your Bluetooth connection with your AirPods or your car. You may have, you know, your FaceTime application crash. There are going to be things like that. So if you are not comfortable with that, then no, do not updates. But if you want to test out all the new features and you don't mind having the occasional app crash, the occasional Bluetooth drop, things like that, then yeah, go ahead and update. It's extremely stable for a beta. I think it's much more stable than the iOS 13 or iOS 12 or really any iOS beta in recent memory. So it's very solid for a beta. I really don't have too many issues on a day-to-day -day basis with any of the devices I tested. So it's not going to be extremely bad. And once again, since the storage bug has been fixed as well, there's really not a ton to complain about with the iOS 14 beta. But yeah, that's been my experience with iOS 14 on the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. Predominantly the iPhone 7 Plus. I only use the iPhone 7 like I mentioned earlier for one day. I've been using the 7 Plus for a couple of weeks now. So that's been my experience with it. Let me know what you guys think about iOS 14 on the iPhone 7 or 7 Plus down in the comments below. Let me know how your experience has been. If you agree with me, if you disagree, let me know all your thoughts down there in the comments below. And if you guys enjoyed the video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you subscribe because I will probably be doing a follow-up review on iOS 14 on the iPhone 7 Plus when the official version releases here in a couple of months. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.